One of the most common questions, what is the best mastering limiter? Well, it depends on the song, of course, but in this video, we'll test some. Mastering limiters that match. Let's get to the video. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixbus TV. Hope you're having a great day and stay safe out there. Before we start, please check the info box down below for more mixing courses on ProMix Academy, special discounts and free plugins. Also, all the links to the plugins that we are gonna see today. And if the videos are helping you, you wanna support the channel, access to exclusive content, including mix consultations with me via Skype or email, click the join button down here, see all the perks of becoming a Mixbus TV member. Let's get to the video. All right, mastering limiter deathmatch. This really is one of the most asked questions, one of the most common questions. And also because every other day a new mastering limiter seems to come out. Now, of course, I have few myself, my favorites, of course, the one I use every day, but also for this test, I downloaded the demos that I could find. So in this video, we are gonna test the following. Ozone Maximizer, which is in combination with some other, one of my favorites. Pro L2 by Fab Filter, another big name, and I like this one very much. I used to split between this one and Ozone uh, more often, a few years back. Now it doesn't happen that much. Big Clipper by Boss Digital Lab. Limitless by DMG Audio. Many point at this one as one of the best and for sure this limiter is pretty amazing. For me myself, I tried it, I actually had it at some point and it has a little bit too many parameters and it's a little too tweakable for me that I lose myself into trying a million things before actually committing to something. But it's basically a very complex multiband limiter. I think there's a way to use this as a wide band. It has clipping, it has other features. I will see what incorporate to make a fair comparison, of course. Then we're gonna have a T-Rox Stealth Limiter. This one on some material is actually very good and it actually reminds me of another one that is gonna be in this bunch, which is Oxford Sonox Limiter, an old one, but this one still kicks some serious ass and it's still one of my favorites. We're also gonna have Cad's Rock K Clip 3. This is a clipper more than a limiter, but it's fairly, it can be fairly transparent to be compared to other limiters. I use this one 99% of the time in my mastering chains among other things including hardware. One of the latest that I got is the Vice MM1. Uh, this is a killer one as well. I use it all the time. Again, one of my favorites. Another one is gonna be Velo 2. I have the a demo of this one is by SoundSpot. I have a couple of plugins from SoundSpot and they are really good. Some people mention this one as another great limiter, so we're gonna test it. Brute limiter number two, Tokyo Dome Lab uh, limiter number six. I've been loving this one since its very first release. It has a clipper limiter, a simulation of the ADDA clipping in its output stage. We're just gonna use the ones that are comparable to the others. And then Maximal 2, I've never tried this one. I got the demo, we'll see how it sounds. Elephant, Voxango. This used to be one of the most talked about, one of the favorites among mastering engineers. And then of course, I'm gonna include also L2 because it's a classic and it's not the one that started it all because that was L1, but the one that made brick wall limiter so popular and started the whole brick wall limiting war. But this is gonna be in uh, as well. And uh, I have a bunch of my mixes here. We're gonna pick and choose probably just two because there are so many, otherwise the video is gonna be like four hours long. The first song we're gonna test these, it's gonna be Reagan Romance in the Dark, one of my mixes. I know the mix very well, it's very balanced, and I know where to set my the limiters that I usually use right there just about when they start to sound bad, and I want to run a stress test, like I said. So obviously I'm gonna shave off way more than I would do in a mastering session uh, just to see the limits of all these limiters. Of course, I'm not gonna run any hardware, just straight mix to limiter and no other processors, just one at a time, okay? So take it with a grain of salt for what it is. And at the end of this, I wanna see if I can find a new limiter to put in my arsenal, to put in my toolbox that catches my attention. It sounds particularly good. Now I'm gonna use for the ones that I know, of course, my favorite settings for uh, Maximizer is usually balanced IRC3 
or IRC4 uh, transient or modern. So usually balance is my favorite. So I'm gonna use for this test my sunizer because they reveal distortion, especially in emitting very, very well. For this first pass, I set the threshold for all of them and nine is where the stress test for me is revealing. It's probably two or three to be more than I would ever limit with one limiter, but just to hear. So. You can hear the differences between these two. Uh, the Pro Filter is very, very versatile. All of these are, but uh, in this case, it, the, the Fab Filter Pro L works really well. I love the dynamic, even if on some uh, material, the dynamic um, style, it adds a little bit of harshness. In this one works particularly well. Where I find Pro L to sometimes fail is with really bottom heavy material like a really big low end like a hip hop track or or something like that so maybe we're gonna try something like that for the rest in this case the comparison between these two the ozone maximizer sounds a little too bright compared to the pro l i might prefer on this one uh, the pro l one of the algorithms transparent i don't like it's too soft uh, all around, same feeling. The punchy adds a little bit too much distortion. Dynamic is cool. Aggressive, I don't like on this track. And modern seems to be very fitting. If you keep into account that I'm limiting a lot with extreme settings, that would probably work really well. Let's go on with the big clipper. Whoa, <laughs> now this, let me put this, I have the microphone here. This is a big surprise. This sounds really good, like really good. And I see it has frequency sensitivity. So it has sensitivity like for three bands, mids, highs, and low. This sounds really nice. Like you can hear the difference with the Pro L. It's pretty obvious and I'm pushing it. I'm 9 dB just like this one and uh, the output for all of them is a minus 0.2. And I'm recording the audio at very low level, so there's no added distortion. It's two processors and one, very common actually. Clip limit, limit clip, blend of the two, and the serial, which is the one that I like the most at first try. Let me compare these two again.
clip before limiting it adds a little bit of a distortion you can tell limit uh, serials limit clipper is the one for this track that i like the most uh, the pro l now sounds kind of pillowy in comparison you can hear on the snare very well let's go to the next one which is limitless again this has so many functions and it's a multi-band you can you have a bunch of styles and you also have clip in too so i can probably uh, add this to for, for comparisons the only one that doesn't have clip in is ozone because pro l when you set the look ahead uh, below 05 is clips so it's a fair comparison but let's try these two i put the limitless in wide band i'm starting with aggressive There's the manual mode which i'm not gonna go into not uh, for this test this would need a whole video uh so far again there's there's a feeling this probably is not just simply not meant to be used as a wideband okay um, because i prefer all the others to this one used in this way i'm gonna try to go factory default See though, ozone hits really hard, but still, um, it, not even in this way, it's in smooth. Let's try aggressive. No, I still like the big clipper better and it sounds, it seems even louder. Again. This is a lot of tweaking, so probably it's just simply user uh, error. But let's go to the next one, and it's uh, a stealth limiter.
Um, it's actually not bad. It's fairly transparent. It seems to have a little bit of a skinny ass, so to speak. Uh, as in, I feel the low end is a little too tight. And again, I want to see how this performs on bottom heavy material. Funny though, the more I listen to Pro L and the more I kind of, it kind of fades on me, the sound that it has. It's, it's weird. Uh, next one, anyway, this is not good. I don't, uh, the tight bounces a lot. I took off the intrasonic filter, which removes the, some, some sort of a DC filter. Four by, no dither, no anything. The balance is nice. The harmonic one and two are not bad for this mix either. Next one is not a fair comparison because this is straight up a clipper. So it does have, add distortion. To 9 dB, it does have distortion. But this thing, remember, when you use a conservative, for the first one, two, three dB, it's absolutely amazing when in combination with another limiter in chain, this is how I use it. And this also is a multiband, I'm not gonna use the multiband, so just to throw this in. I'm not gonna uh, stay on this one too long. In this case, like I said, adds a little bit of distortion. It's a clipper straight up. So it's not even fair to compare, but uh, I think it's essential in a mastering chain. Well, not essential. It's one of the tools that I really, really like in a mastering chain to just grab that one dB and give you that little edge. Let's try this one. It adds, like I said, random silence is that brute limiter number two. I've already set it as all the other ones. So let's try the curve natural. No, not really. It has quite some distortion and it has quite some pumping going on. Uh, let's try the vase, one of my favorites again. This is not really meant to be pushed to extremes, but still the quality of this one is a different level when you use it in the range that is meant for and it works the best. So this is how the vase uh, works. So we have five styles here. All right, and this is basically a pre-processing applied before the limiting. So if I keep this amount knob at zero, no limiting is applied and it's pure, simple brick wall limiting by turning the limiter gain up to how many dB you want. In this case, we are at nine. So I will try different uh, styles because that's the beauty of the vase.
Yeah, like I said, this is a lot of gain reduction for this, but if you notice the styles changes a lot and the wide style is something that I really, really like when I don't have my hardware, when I don't master with my hardware because between the Fusion and the Wes Audio mastering compressor, I can work with the stereo image the way I want in mastering. But when I don't use hardware, this is one of those limiters that it's more likely to make the chain, uh, especially maybe as last for like the last dB, a little more distorted than uh, Pro L and uh, Ozone and Stealth 2 and a big clipper as well, because so far it's for this track might be my favorite. Let's go to the next one, which is the Oxford limiter. Now this can get really, really loud. Not free of distortion sometimes, but there are a couple of tricks with this limiter. One is, for example, to run it as a pre-limiter by turning the soft knee all the way up and then using a brick wall limiter after. That is a very old trick that I'm not gonna explain fully, but it also has this enhanced curve, which is different from the inflator, which is also meant to increase RMS and perceived loudness. So you hear this one does have a sound, it's pretty aggressive, it was very, very common in metal and rock and hard hitting material uh, a few years ago. It does have a sound, it's not completely transparent. And again, let me, let me show you the enhanced curve. Because what we usually do compared to other limiters is we back off the input a little bit and we compensate with the enhanced curve so you hear for example compared to uh, the l2 i'm 1 db less i'm 8 instead of 9 but with the enhanced curve it sounds louder Right, it's still adding a little bit of distortion. You can tweak attack and release and soft knee and all that. Uh, but overall, this is a fairly aggressive limiter, but still has its place on some material. I still like it very, very much. Let's go to the next one, which is Velo 2. I never tried this one, so let's just get into it. No, this one doesn't really make the cut. It's not really up to par with the others. So let's go to the next one. It is the Talking On Lab limiter number six. We are gonna turn everything off because it's got HF limiter compressor clipper. Actually, I will keep the clipper in because we most of them have a clipping stage. So I will try first with the limiter and to be uh, fair, I will not run any multi band. In 
this case compressing limiting this much in wideband mode it's you can hear a little bit of distortion you can hear uh, um, a little bit of artifacts but also as it was for the limitless this is not supposed to be used in that in this way so just to be fair let's let me let me show you how it is in multiband mode Okay, still not for heavy heavy limiting I don't use it that way in this case it softened a little bit let's go to the next one which again I put it here but I don't know how it's gonna compare because we only can go up to five so it's just for shits and giggles I guess Well, it already starts to sound a little crunchy, although the tape and tube are supposed to. It, it sounds more like a saturator than a brick wall limiter, which is supposed to be transparent. <music> Loud is pumping. I can put this one at five and see how it compares, just to be fair. No, it still it still adds quite some uh, saturation I would say but it's really is distortion elephant the elephant in the room literally because this like I said it used to be a super super popular limiter and it has a whole bunch of modes you can see them here AI GC 3 4 EL uni EL 4 EL 4 bright and so on so I'm just gonna scroll through these The first very first try and sorry for the pumping it mutes again you can see it here it mutes um, maybe it, it needs more tweaking but for for the first impression I'm not none of the algorithm really caught my attention the compact was probably the one that was more fitting for me for this song but it was also quite less loud than the others at the first try it doesn't impress me and then the good old L2 let's just go to it You 
the L2 is the L2. <laughs> it kind of, it kind of has that sound, you know, it just flattens things. And, and it's funny because it's somewhat a classic sound, but it smashes things pretty hard. But uh, yeah, of course the others, uh, pretty much all the others are cleaner. Uh, the transient are retained better and you know but the l2 i always use it in mixing all the time for vocals and bass and other things just not in mastering so for me the winners really remain the same because i have the vase i own the vase i own uh the maximizer um pro l2 and um stealth limiter um what else cape clip 3 and the tokyo dome lab but the big clipper is the winner among these for me you know, compared to what I already have. I still love Ozone, I still love the vase to death and uh, the K-Clip and all, all the ones that I have, I really love. But the big clipper is really a nice surprise. I'm gonna try really quick these on another song. Let's grab something with a bigger low end and a little more dynamic, which is this that I mastered some time ago. I'm just gonna find the stress level with Ozone for this and and then just go one after the other and we see how they react and i'm just gonna put the same uh values for all of them okay all right let's do 12 because the here it's where ozone start to crunch I 
was younger, my stomach growling from hunger. No food in the fridge, my mother grinding for supper. And my say words, no sunshine on this side of town. You could get lost and never be. So with these settings a little more conservative, you can hear still the differences. A little bit of softening with the L2. Uh, a nice color overall handling the low end, the um, Tokyo Dome Lab, uh, absolutely great the vase, especially in wide mode, absolutely loved it on this track. The Oxford Limiter Seed is one of those moments that you say, ah, damn it, this is, it's got the right bite for this track. And with the Henans, it could be a little louder and, than anything. Uh, the, still, the Stealth Limiter, it, it was fairly okay, fairly transparent. Probably I should have pushed all more, but we're not here trying to hear distortion at all costs. The Limitless performed much better than, than before, than in the other track. Uh, it was pretty mellow, even if it's in aggressive style. Um, probably, again, tweaking the multiband, this is a great one. Big Clipper, again, it wins for me like it has a sound that clicks with me i i see how i can use it in my chain so 99.9 percent .9 i'm gonna get this one nothing to say on the pro l performs as intended it's a little bit pillowy even here again and ozone 9 on this one particularly it, it seems like the one that had a little more click on that uh, kick drum, but I also have the transient uh, emphasis engaged because I almost always use it when I use this one. But again, big clipper, big win. Love the vase, but I loved it before too. And the Oxford Limiter is again one of those that you want to have in your arsenal. For the others, the Elephant didn't really impress me. I love Voxango. Voxango makes great stuff. Just this one doesn't really compete with the others, at least for the little time that I spent. The Brute Limiter just is not there to the point that it makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. I tried the manual release, I tried the different curves, but I don't see any other parameter. It pumps really, really hard and I don't know, just not there. Anyway, I think this is it for this video. This was more for shits and giggles than any scientific test. I hope this video was useful. I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. Follow Mixbus TV on Instagram and Facebook. We have a lot of exclusive stuff going there. Clips from my mixing, my mastering sessions, videos and news and also exclusive giveaways. Subscribe if you haven't already and please click the notification bell. It helps the channel a lot. Stay safe and see you next time.